Father God, we commit our service in your mighty hand, O Lord. We bring the praise and worship session and also the word part under your mighty hand. And let the will of the Holy Spirit alone be glorified and be done. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings and welcome to all who joined us today in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. And today we have Shiloh to lead us in praise and worship. And let's welcome Shiloh. Praise the Lord to all. The first song we are going to be singing is Blessed Be Your Name. If you know the song, please join with me. Blessed be your name 
His name is beautiful and his name is wonderful. In this time of pandemic, he is our guide.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful and happy to meet you once again on this beautiful Sunday. It's a beautiful day to reach out to God. Oh, it's a beautiful day to set yourself aside and spend more time. Hallelujah. Spend more time in the presence of God. Give your time to God and He will bless you like never before. Hallelujah. Today, I was, you know, all this week, we were busy with many other things and I was keep on thinking about, you know, what is the word that I need to share on Sunday? What is the word that I have to talk to people? What is the word that God wants me to deliver to the people? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been thinking about this every day, every night and every morning. I've been thinking in and out. What is the word that I have to give on this Sunday? Hallelujah. As I was preparing myself, God put this thought and I believe this is going to bless you and I believe this word will minister to you. Hallelujah. Whatever circumstances you are, whatever situation you are going through, uh, I know I would request you just throw those things aside. And in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is freedom. In the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will take victory. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? God is for us. Who can be against us hallelujah if God is for us who can be against us this morning I was just thinking like this what would you do if you are given an opportunity you know if I bring you know the person who is the cause of all the problem that is happening around you if I'm going to place that person before you what would you do to him or her before you could think about it I wanted to stop there and I want to encourage you don't continue to think about the person who bothers you don't try to think about the person who is troubling you come on let's stop we know For all the problems that is happening around us or the problem that are heading, the problem that we had before, we know the cause is the devil. We know that he is a you know, root cause of all the problem. We understand that. But what if I given you an opportunity? You know, if I give you a chance and I place this devil before you or in front of you, what would you do? This is my question that I want to place before you. What would you do if you see that devil who is a you know, reason of all that that you are going through? Who is a reason of the, you know, who stopped your productivity? Who, you know, destroyed your peace? Just think about it and you discover whatever. You know, you lost the expenses that he brought in this season. You know, he made your business to shut down. But that's not the truth. That's, that is what we're going to, you know, look into it. But what would you do if I give you opportunity to, you know, love you to stand before the devil? What would you do to him if I give him an opportunity? Or imagine this way. You know, we see in that WWE wrestling, the two people fight inside the ring. What if I place you inside the ring and you're going to, you know, have head on with the devil? What would you do? The Bible says that he is a thief. The Bible says he is a liar from the beginning. The Bible says he is the cause of all the problem that you're going through. He did everything that you are, you know, suffering about. He is the reason, but you see this person in front of you right now. I'm talking about the devil. What would you do to him? I know many of you now, you know, preparing yourself. I can see that you're preparing yourself to say, Brother, if I only get one chance, if I get only one chance, I would take an opportunity to give him a knockout punch that I will never see him again. Hallelujah. That is a full force that you have in you. I know that if we are given an opportunity, we will... You know, we will try to do something to pull him down, right? This morning when I was just, you know, 
thinking about all these things i asked my daughters i told them i placed this question before them what would you do if devil comes and stand before you and you're given opportunity to you know destroy him or you're given opportunity to fight with him what would you girls do so the three immediately replied the first one replied like this my elder daughter shailo she replied like this she said i will put on the whole armor of god and then i will defend him that's a beautiful you know thought that she had but that was not so effective to me i said okay that's good so i asked my second daughter what would you do if you get an opportunity to you know if you given an opportunity to fight with the devil what would you do and she immediately you know not even hesitated to think she immediately quickly said i will box him i will give him one knockout punch like never before and i will make sure that he's dead that was you know quick response you know a furious you know a, a response who is the cause of all the problem around us she replied like that i don't know many of you would have replied like this so i went to the little one i was just thinking okay the two were little wise enough to answer but i don't know how do sarah will reply for this question so i looked at sarah and i said sarah what would you do if you given an uh, you know opportunity to fight with the devil and he is the cause of all the problem that you're not able to go to school you're not able to meet your friends you're not able to go out for you know sightseeing you're not able to spend your vacation you're not able to do anything he is the cause of what would you do to him you know so so cool so so relaxed you know she replied to me like this daddy you know what i will do i will call the angel immediately and i will ask him to fight what a beautiful answer she gave hallelujah you know when she gave this answer i felt that this is amazing answer and i said lord i know that you are trying to tell me something through this children you know the bible says he is a roaring lion the bible says he is a thief the bible says he is a liar from the beginning but today if you get an opportunity to fight with him see the bible says he is a defeated one hallelujah jesus defeated him on the cross we don't have to fight the one who has been defeated hallelujah most of the time what we do is what we think in our mind is we wanted to fight the enemy we want to fight the people those who are coming against us we are thinking to fight and fight and fight and we are wrestling you know and wasting our energy in things that are not supposed to be wasted i love that answer because she said why should i fight when god has finished the devil hallelujah i'm going to call the angel because they know him better they know how to fight him how to defeat him hallelujah my elder daughter beautifully described She said I will protect myself first and then I will take up the sword of the word to fight with him. Hallelujah. See today I'm going to place the real devil that is a cause of all the problem that is around you. When you find him, hallelujah. Now you need to decide what is the, you know, tool, what is the method you're going to use to fight and defeat this guy. Hallelujah. Once if you're given an opportunity, you need to finish him otherwise he will finish you. This morning I wanted to encourage you. You know when David entered the battlefield, he was a little boy and Saul said, "Why don't you put on all the armor?" put on my armor and then get into the field i understand i understand the spirit that you have i understand the boldness you have but with those two you cannot defeat this guy because this guy is from the childhood he is a warrior don't just face him without understanding about who is your enemy it's so tough to you know fight against the enemy without knowing who he is Hallelujah. The Bible says he's a thief. He steals, he kills and he destroys. Hallelujah. Now David in the battlefield goes there and he says, "Sir, I tried all this. This is not fitting me. This is not the armor. This is not the sword that I supposed to use, but God have given me a spiritual sword. The word of God. I am going to go with it. I am going to go with the technique that I know." Hallelujah. each one have a different technique dear beloved now david picks up 
you know stones and he runs towards Goliath and he says here I'm coming to fight you uncircumcised Philistine and I'm coming against you are you trying to talk against the children of most high God are you coming against the anointed are you coming against the chosen and separated today I will finish you and throw your head to the you know birds of this air and they will destroy you today today I'm coming to fight you and he goes with the you know the great power of God he did not see how big the enemy but he understood how big the God that he serves I told you the challenge is before you I'm going to place the devil before you the moment you identify him I want you to think in your own ways and the ideas that God has given you how to defeat this person in order to lead a successful life everything around you if you feel that are stopped and not moving he is the cause of that now I'm going to make him stand before you in few seconds now you're going to see him now you're going to understand and then you're going to fight what does the Bible teach us about it hallelujah you know Moses when he said the Israelite he said be still and know that I am God he said be still you are facing a you know big army a big group of people coming against you he says do not tremble do not fear do not you know get frightened just stay where you are and God will fight for you hallelujah I like the way my you know little daughter explained it she said I will bring the angel and I will let the angel fight for me hallelujah see we we are fighting the defeated we we we, we know that the devil is a defeated one we don't have to fight him if you want to fight the enemy who's causing all the problem you need to take the sword of God you need to take the help of God that's why Moses said be still and know that I am God hallelujah Moses said be still do not panic and you will see the victory of God you will see the victory of God God is the one who gives you freedom God is the one who gives you deliverance God is the one who fights the good fight or the battle hallelujah but he can never fight the battle without you there is somebody should be on the battlefield there is somebody should face head on to destroy the devil God needs you through you he will destroy but today what I want you to identify the moment I place that devil before you you gonna fight him immediately quickly like never before so that you will enjoy the blessings of God hallelujah see I'm serious about what I'm talking I've been you know thinking about all these months the way how the enemy brought the problems chaos around us he made us he paralyzed our thoughts but the Bible teaches us something else now I'm going to place him before you hallelujah Let's turn our Bible to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine powers to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretensions that... El- that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ hallelujah now I place the devil before you the mind is a battlefield no you are constantly being attacked on your mind your mind is thinking things of the world but God wants you to think of his word David says in Psalms 119 I meditate your word you know so that I will not sin against you I meditate, I keep your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. The enemy that you are fighting, we think that enemy is the person. We think the enemy is somebody who is next to us, a husband, a wife. See, the enemy is your mind. Your mind is constantly fighting against you. He is the big devil that you need to destroy him. You need to bring him under the subjection of Almighty. The Bible says, Though that are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Who is that enemy? 
the devil is nothing but the mind he attacks your mind now your mind is clear if you have a clear conscience you going to enjoy the blessings of god you going to be connected with god to receive whatever god has for you romans chapter 7 23 let's re- let's turn to romans 7 23 this is a beautiful verse for in my inner being i delight in god's law but i see another law at work in the members of my body waging war against the law of mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members there is something fighting against me i am trying to win the battle i am thinking that this person is a problem for me that person is a problem for me no one is a problem for you the problem is your mind you are not able to think clearly you are not able to think according to the you know word of god i'm going to read quick you know few verses for you quickly and then i'm going to give you three c's you know that is going to help you how to apply to overcome this battle let's read another verse galatians 5:17 i'm going to read it for you this verse is beautiful one for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want you are not able to do what you want to do there are many things that we want to do fleshly we think this is right sometimes what you know you feel right may be not right in the eyes of the lord sometimes we fail there only hallelujah we going to understand how to fight this unseen enemy who is mostly fighting in your mind we going to take responsibility take ownership to fight against this devil or else you are not going to have a clear thoughts your vision will be paralyzed your focus will be destroyed by people because people's opinion sometimes paralyze our thoughts people's opinion about us might destroy us we need to think or we need to keep thinking about the word of god and what it says about you and me romans 8:6 says the mind of sinful man is death but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace the mind of a sinful man is death but the mind controlled by the spirit of god is life and peace you want to have life and life abundance and god wants to give you life and life abundance you want to enjoy the peace in abundance in your life the bible says in you know john chapter 10 and 10 it says the thief comes to steal kill and destroy his nature is to destroy you how he will come he is not going to come you know directly visibly he is going to fight within you if you going to allow all your thoughts to carry you you know soon or later you're going to be paralyzed by those thoughts your thoughts your words will speak against you on the judgment day the bible says because you are accountable of the words that you're speaking hallelujah what do i do three c's i'm going to tell you and teach you that is going to help you luke chapter 10 verse 27 let's turn to luke 1027 a beautiful verse it says he answered jesus answered love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind hallelujah and love your neighbors as yourself love the lord with all your heart and all your mind when you love god more and more and more the enemy cannot come inside to paralyze your thought because you are going to do exactly what the lord wants to do you are going to exactly give room for god more to operate in your life you're going to allow the spirit of god to operate in your life hallelujah let me quickly say the three c's that i was mentioning bring every thought captive first c bring it under captive captive 
how can i bring my body into subjection from pride lust and other things the devil can bring corrupt thoughts into our lives through opinions hunger of lust and power and conviction that exalts against the knowledge of god these satan thoughts can first affect our minds and then alter our behaviors very important see first it it develops and sets then it alters your behavior you are no more you know like what the bible says now you know bible says love the lord love your neighbor you are once able to you know handle any kinds of hurt that come against you any kind of correction that come against you once you were able to handle it and you know you 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 you, you allowed corrections but now when the correction comes towards you, you you know you are trying to exalt the thoughts of the enemy to come against those corrections you're not able to settle yourself for the corrections you are trying to contradict you are trying to over speak you are trying to over you know think and say i know it all i know everything those thoughts are coming from the devil your thoughts destroys your destiny your future let me read it again these satan thoughts can first affect our minds and then alter our behavior we must not rely on human ideas human gives you know man can give many ideas to bring victory to overcome satan no you cannot fight him that way our weapons are not carnal but mighty in god hallelujah we know the bible says the city of corinthians like most ancient cities had a fortress in which residents took refuges these fortresses are like strongholds which must be demolished only by spiritual weapon you need to use the right weapon to destroy these thoughts we must make every thought that is not from and about lord jesus a prisoner bound in chains and sentence it to life in prison if it is not from god you must immediately take him to the prison or you must bring the thought under the subjection of almighty paul often says i bring my body under subjection after i preach to all let me not lose what i gained i don't want to lose what i gained the anointing the calling the devil is a relentless in trying to capture your mind as his prisoner instead you my friend can capture that battle in your mind and make it prisoners instead you my friend can capture that battle in your mind and make it a prisoner example negative fearful unwanted thoughts do not come from the lord satan is the father of lies and he is a good at manipulating wrongful thoughts in our minds when people manipulate when people you know abnormal in their talks you can easily identify that they are doing it from flesh when you operate in flesh you going to lose lot you know in 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 times when you start doing that it will look nice it will comfort you it will give you more energy but sooner or later you're going to be completely paralyzed the words that you're using the thoughts that are coming inside of you slowly is going to take over you when you when 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 you are completely paralyzed you will try to call to god it will be hard for him to come and help you because you have put yourself in captivity how are you going to escape the trap of the enemy i wanted to you know i didn't i wanted to just you know highlight this we are fighting the wrong fight sometimes we are blaming devil for everything but he is already defeated one we need to call god to fight our battle we need to take the help of god because he already defeated him he knows him well the bible says jesus went into the temptation with the power of the holy spirit of god tempted in every ways and he came out with the same power of the holy spirit of god the day when you start working in flesh the day when you talk you know start thinking in flesh 
you know fleshly when you start thinking carnally you are losing your peace your your joy if if you ever think in the way how the word of god teaches you to think i'm telling you you're going to make victory you're going to you know enjoy you're going to receive everything that god has for you once you are free in your mind you will be able to receive everything that god has for you because god wants to speak to you the second c is cast down strongholds and every high thing faith is denying self control and placing our trust in lord jesus christ faith is our spiritual weapon that can bring our body into subjection and cast down every high thoughts hallelujah strongholds are fortresses and difficult challenges that must be recognized and destroyed you must recognize them and destroy them immediately have you asked these questions have you asked these questions have you built for yourself an invisible shell to shut yourself from every one else have you built for yourself an invisible shell to shut yourself from everyone else do you have a covering that you can protect yourself from unwanted people the people once rejected as will walk into our houses the people once who rejected as will come into our lives you know to talk about things they will say oh i know that you will catch up i know that you will do good but do you know that whether that is schemes are right or wrong are you protected do you hear the voices of the devil louder than the life giving word of jesus protect yourself make a shell and protect yourself from all harmful rages of the devil do you hear the voice of the devil louder than the life giving words of jesus what is more bombarded in your life the word of god or the you know the, the voice of the world if we correct all these things i think you will be a successful believer the bible encourages us to confess our sins to each other and pray for one another in james chapter 5:16 says if you live in these dark holes strongholds without sharing your struggles with someone else they can crush you you know you need to have some spiritual mentors or leaders to go and share you need to have somebody who is trustworthy that you can share your problems that are bothering your mind so that you will be free from it because when you say this you know say those things to the trusted one or who can build you who can mentor you who can bring you out of it if you you know take that courage to go and share they might give you a piece of advice a piece of ideas from the word of god which would be blessing to bring you out of that captivity if you're going through some struggles if you're having battles in your mind if you're having battle in your life you don't know how to address that issue i wanted to help you i want to tell you come to god i go to god i find a person who would be able to help you who is a servant of god who do you believe that he can help you with this challenge that you're going through but i would recognize you the best thing take it to god and he knows everything he can help you why you are in the situation is because you opened up the doors you open up way for the enemy to come inside you allowed you went out of the shell of the word of god you went out of the protection of almighty you loved and you believed and you welcomed everything that is not supposed to be welcome and today what you're suffering is because of those things that you welcomed in your mind number 3 carry the double edged sword as i told you my daughter said first i will put on the armor of god then i will take the you know sword of the spirit the word of god hallelujah carry the double edged sword as a born again child of god we are engaged in a spiritual battle whether we like it or not our weapons are not fleshly but spiritual ephesians chapter 6 mentions six pieces of armor a believer must carry a six piece of armor that a believer must carry let me say it one by one offensive weapon one offensive weapon sword of the spirit also known as the word of god 
five defensive weapon best breastplate and shield and helmet and then belt hebrews 4:12 kjv translation says for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart hallelujah it divides takes the thoughts that are that are bothering your life away from your life it has a power to divide it it can show you what causes that problem how you have such nature is because of the people that you mingle with talk to here is how to carry god's word to enjoy your mutual enemy when we are caught up in the battle of your mind by memorizing number a by memorizing scripture because psalm said in 119 and 11 thy word have i hid in my heart so that i may not sin against you satan knows the words as well in fact he quoted scripture while attempting to tempt jesus keep that in mind he is good at tempering and dilating the word of god or god's promises it is important to set our mind on jesus and be on guard colossians 3 2 to 5 esv translation said set your minds on things that are above not on the things that are on earth put to death therefore what is earthly in you sexual immorality impurity pa- passion evil desire and covetousness covetousness sorry which is idolatry romans 8 5 to 7 says but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace because the mind sets on the flesh because the mind set on the flesh is hostile hostile towards god b by meditating upon the words daily meditating means rehearses one's mind you know you need to rehearse it once and again you need to say it and then do it accordingly focus on a chapter or a verse and write it down in your journal have a personal journal find the deeper meaning be you know behind verses with relation to the sinful thoughts and ideology that are going against the knowledge of god write it down do a journal the words and i you know try to find out the meaning behind it so that you can help yourself to defeat that enemy that is fighting against your thoughts that is fighting against your life james 4:8 says draw near to god and he will draw near to you the more you go closer to him the more you go closer to him he comes closer to you hallelujah what i wanted to say on this sunday my message is simple the mind is a battlefield now he is the real enemy that you need to fight but most of the time we we try to fight try to have arguments with people we try to bring in problems by doing things in fleshly i wanted to encourage you by proclaiming verses against the battle in your mind when you find yourself getting caught up in the lies that the devil has whispered into your minds speak life god is life and he breathed in life into our bodies when he tried to tell the lies you speak against it and tell the word of god the god's word has life you speak the life hallelujah speak to your mountain to be moved mark chapter 11 23 says speak to it you need to speak again and again to the thoughts that are defiling you youngsters remind these things what i wanted to tell you is the thoughts is paralyzing your future the thoughts is paralyzing your productivity if you're not able to score better marks is because of your thoughts you have allowed something to take over you your friends have you know brought captivity spending more time with your friends spending time with unwanted people brought you under this captivity if you want to excel if you want to excel for god in this world i'm telling you spend more time in reading the word and act accordingly 
obey to the spiritual you know counselings that comes from God through the man of God who is ministering to you who is responsible of your life take corrections that would help you destroy every arguments speculation and be alert 2 Corinthians 10 5 1 Peter 1 13 learn how to speak life to your life finally complete trust in the mighty and power of Christ can help us win against the battle of the mind look to yourself and you can fail look to yourself and you can fail look unto Jesus for therein comes from our victory if you try to fix the problem with your own ideology ideas people opinions you will fail but if you look to God and ask God's wisdom you will win you will enjoy the mind controlled by the Spirit of God is life and life abundance let's close our eyes the three C's that I've told you I wanted to just recap bring every thought captive cast down strongholds and every high things that are exalts against God carry the double edged sword and fight against the thoughts divide them you know the God's word can divide them deliver them deliver you from them let's close our eyes and look to God hallelujah thank you Jesus Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. Jesus mighty to save. Dear God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to learn from your word. That our mind is a battlefield and the enemy is trying hard to defeat us. But we know that we will take the full armor of God. We'll take the word of the sword. We take the sword of God. The word of God to fight against the enemy. Because we know that he's already been defeated. We are fighting the enemy who has already been defeated. I'm not going to believe what the enemy says but I'm going to believe what God's word says. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. For I am more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I am a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I am defeated when I think what the world says about me. Or when I give room for the world to give his opinion over me. But if I depend on the God's word. If I depend upon God's plan or his promises. I'm going to excel. I'm going to do better in my life. Father, we bring the lives of people, those who are watching this video, those who are watching this online program, I bring them under the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that the battle is in the mind and the mind is a battlefield. Father, I pray that they will identify the right enemy and defeat him before he could take captive. Before he could paralyze their thoughts, I pray that you will help them to take control take authority to stand against the enemy father give them victory father I pray that you will give them clarity father I pray that they will meditate on those words encourage themselves to be a better person father I pray that they will excel in everything that they do father I pray that they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength father I pray that from this very moment that they will march victory that they will excel accelerate with the word of God 
everything that they lost in their life whatever it is father i pray let it be restored in jesus name because you said i have come to give you life and life abundance let them enjoy the abundance life of god father i pray that they will have a fearless life father i pray that they will enjoy the provisions and blessings of god keep them all safe and sound i speak your blessings in jesus precious name i pray amen and amen hallelujah thank you so much for the time that you given and i believe that you will continue to meditate on the things that i have shared with you may god bless you